Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is George Lackeck and today, well, it's the 28th of March, which means March is slowly but surely coming to an end. And I just seen that I didn't check my camera battery before I left the house. Well, once a month, I am trying to make a habit, a, a constant feature on this channel to make a monthly vlog. And last month, it, it was in Can Playa del Carmen is where it was. It was awesome. I was warm. I didn't have any worries in the world except that I had to go home very soon after. And that's where I am right now. Back home in Edmonton. Edmonton problems, Edmonton weather. If you can still hear it, I was sick last week with a cold. And I think it was actually an old-fashioned cold, the way we used to know it before the big panic of 2019, 20, 21, 22. It was a cold. It was nasty though. Anyways, what I wanted to tell you is, um, before that started, I attended something that was called the the transit camp here in Edmonton because I was under the impression that at this camp City Council was going to inform the public about what the plans were about making our LRT and our bus system safer than it is at the moment. And I gotta say that I didn't learn a whole lot about it that I didn't know before. They are hiring more outreach teams that are supposed to patrol the LRT stations and the trains and reach out to those people who are loitering there using illicit drugs and all this kind of thing and hook them up with services that they might need. Now for someone to be hooked, hooked up with services I don't think that's going to work unless they actually want to be hooked up with the services and how to get them to that point. I think that's a much bigger problem than the city council uh, should be uh, worried about. Now about the LRT, I'm not convinced that it is the best it could be. And I'm even more worried about the new LRT that's going to open up, I don't know, that was supposed to open up two years ago or a year and a half. I don't know anymore, but there are constant problems with this. They've been testing the trains. There wasn't a single passenger on this new valley line yet. However, there were already several collisions with motorized traffic. So there's something wrong if this can happen when those trains aren't even uh, running regular schedules yet. And I think it is in part that in Edmonton, for way too long, we've been prioritizing um, motorized traffic, cars, for too long. And now we're going to throw an LRT line in there. And the problem is that uh, there isn't even any arms that go down anymore. You know, you're supposed to just kind of look for the train. And uh, there's a certain way you're not allowed to turn in certain intersection. And yes, for those who are not in Edmonton, uh, this might be interesting for you too, because transit is in crisis, from what I heard, all over North America. And a lot of it has to do with the same problems we're facing here in Edmonton, which is the opioid crisis. The, the, the drug addicts, get high on the train because especially in the winter time here they don't have anywhere else to go so they ride the train all day or and you know it's cold outside then they don't want to shoot up or whatever they do outside in the cold which even i can understand but you know and that's where i think the province needs to step in these people as much as I don't approve of their habits and uh, I don't want to get started on whether I'm for or against decriminalizing hard drugs, I don't think it's going to achieve anything on its own. On a second thought, I don't think these people are criminals. I, I think they're, they're people with problems and we all have problems. <laughs> you know, I think if you've got that kind of problem, a drug addiction, 
to a substance like fentanyl or whatever, you got big, 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 big problems. You know, I might have an addiction to YouTube or coffee or I don't know, but it's relatively benign, really. It's not going to kill me anytime soon. Maybe I'm addicted to flying drones. Well, you know, you get you get what I'm talking about. If you're on fentanyl, you could die any day. And these people have enough problems, you know, they don't need to, uh, on top of that, have to worry about uh, getting a record or something. But however, how do we stop them from that behavior? And letting them do this on the train and in the train stations, in my opinion, that's nothing but enabling them. And at this transit camp that I'm talking about, well, they were talking about having compassion. We're supposed to have compassion because these are, like I said, they are people, they have problems, and, you know, anybody could be there. I don't know if that's true. But, you know, they're just people like anybody else. And we're supposed to have compassion, and that's why right now they don't have anywhere else to go. So they're doing it on the train and on the bus. I don't know. Haven't been on a bus for a while, believe it or not, because to be quite honest with you, I don't feel safe there. And that's me. I can defend myself, you know. Last Sunday in Toronto, a 16 year old boy who was waiting at a subway station got stabbed and he's dead. And who stabbed him? Well, it was a guy with no fixed address and uh, with the police record and like why is he even wandering around there? Why are we putting people in danger on the subway stations, on the LRT stations? That That is something I don't think our politicians are quite really aware of how bad this problem really is. Like guys, if you're on council or you're in parliament or whatever, please do me a favor and ride the train in your city. Because you need to see what's going on. You need to see that with your own eyes and don't wear the fancy suit and your label on there that, uh, you know who I am. Well, <laughs> that's just like going there with the police uniform, you know. You need to see what's really going on because People need to ride the train and less and less people are actually willing to do that and they go to great lengths to get enough money or do whatever it takes to buy a car so they don't have to ride the train. And that's a problem because we're investing money into the trains and it's a really con um, conceptually a much better idea. I had a comment about uh, these things from a guy here from Edmonton who also has a YouTube channel. Greg, I think you know I'm talking about you. And uh, we agreed on some things about the LRT that it's not the best it could be for sure. And I don't know if we have to go to fair gates or whatever it takes, but I think it is the job of the province and even the federal government to do something about this opioid crisis, at least acknowledge that it exists and that it's a big problem. Not something that uh, you could just safely ignore while you're talking about Chinese interference in Canadian elections and uh, the grocery prices. These are important too, but our cities are dying right now. Our cities are in big, big doo-doo because everything's being destroyed. Why do you think I lost my truck? I blame it on the opioid crisis. Why do you think that 16-year-old got stabbed that died in Toronto? Well, <laughs> like you see my drift? That, that is affecting everything in our cities, in our society. So it needs to stop. A compassion? I, I, I don't agree with that completely. Yes, to some point, absolutely. But, you know, if you're giving somebody all the tools that they need to, uh, to continue their bad behavior and then have compassion because they can't, just can't change it, it's because you, like, we never even give them any reason to change it. Because yeah, it, it, it's an addiction. They're not going to change it just because they want to get better right now. Because I've, I've witnessed this uh, with the person I was close to once. 
all the good intentions are there at certain times when you have an addiction. However, they're not stable. So the times change and all of a sudden, even though they had made a commitment to stay sober, what happens is that they fall right back into the old patterns and then, uh, you know, it takes a little more. It takes maybe some force or maybe some more serious consequences like freezing your butt off outside or uh, being locked up to actually change something. And guys, something in Canada needs to change. You don't see drug addicts all over town in uh, Merida, uh, Yucatan. You don't even see it in Playa del Carmen where there's all kinds of crazy shit going on. You know, it's serious. And that's what my blog about uh, the end of March is about. My battery is just about to die. If you listen to me for all this long, well, perhaps at some point I'm gonna uh, think about doing live streams on this channel. However, I'd like to get some more subscribers and some more people who engage into the dialogue and stuff before that's a thing. And really, my channel is about adventure, but how can you have an adventure that is safe and, and good and everything when uh, you know there's a lot of serious problems going around, on around you? That's the case right now, and I know this is not the most serious problem in the world, but I just thought I'd bring this up. So leave me a comment i'm interested in what uh, your take on all this is and uh well you, maybe you can also push the like button because that helps my channel and as you probably noticed by now i'm trying to build this channel i'm trying to make something out of it that you know that has a benefit to more people than just uh, a few hundred or so so anyways if you're not subscribed it's only a click of the button, there's no charge. So why not do it right now? And I'll be back very soon. And by the way, the bicycle touring talk, I didn't do it last week because I had a stuffy nose. How can you talk like that? But I'm working on the new script and it's gonna come out as soon as it's ready. Thanks for watching. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that on YouTube. You're supposed to say that, always oh, look, there's more videos on the screen and why don't you watch those right now? See, I'm, I'm learning the ropes. <laughs> See you soon.